everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of Suplexes, Scores, and Save Points. I am Ryan, as always, being joined by the picker of matches, the one, the only, the guru of... I, I, it, it's Nathan. <laughs> you can't see me. Uh, I mean, they really can't. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody, to another Suplexes show here on this wonderful Tuesday when you're listening to it. Um, we have another big week of wrestling. We've got another pay-per-view to talk about and another prediction punishment to do. Um, but before, Technically, two pay-per-views to talk about. Yes, because we forgot. Yeah, Impact also had Victory Road, which Nathan will be talking about. Uh, before we get to results, we've got some drama we want to talk about with the WWE. Uh, Vince McMahon, once again, has gone completely apeshit crazy. Uh, <laughs> he has uh, basically informed all of the talent that their cameo and Twitch and all that is going to be taken over by WWE like sometime really soon. I don't remember the exact, uh, exact date, but uh, yeah. So we've got some, uh, you know, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what, what. Ah. Yeah, the details haven't come out on it yet, so we don't know fully if that's exactly what he meant, so we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. But if it is, if, if, if that's what he actually meant, then, yeah, it's messed up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. I mean, the way Paige reacted on Twitter, it sounds like that's what it is. Yeah, Paige, like, Paige kind of went off and uh, lost her mind a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, some of them, like Paige, they, that's all they got. They're not on wrestling. They're yeah, not on I mean, yeah, no, she's completely in the in the right to freak out. Um, but so we've got, yeah, so we'll, if any major thing comes from it, I know some of the people have uh, reached out to, like, that Andrew Yang. Um, they reached out to him to try to, you know, maybe see what he can do. <laughs> um like I said, I don't know what Vincent Mann is thinking by doing that. I don't know what his, you know, what his thought process was going into that. But anyway, we just wanted to mention that. We've got some crazy stuff happening. And so we wanted to just talk about that real quick. And uh, ready to get into the results? Yeah. All right. So, obviously, we always start off with ROH, as it is technically on air before WWE, uh, before Raw. Uh, ROH, once again, still doing their pure tournament. This is week three of the first round matches. Um, we've got two more matches this week. Uh, we've got Silas Young versus Fred Yehi. Yeah, he. You, you, he. Yeah. You know, I don't. <laughs> uh, this was this was this was decent, uh, pretty good match. Uh, I, I was actually thinking Silas Young was going to get the win, but uh, no, uh, roll up quick roll up from uh, Fred Ye Major Major upset. Yeah, and Fred Ye Yehi against the win. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of a kind of a top victory upset. there. So that was that was pretty cool. I was expecting Silas and. Freddie got the win. Uh, the, the other match on the show was Josh the Goods Woods versus Kenny King. Uh, Kenny King, former X Division champion, former ROH tag team champion. So he's, he's been in the business for a while. Uh, he's, he's the veteran of the match. Um, so they, they use the rope break rules in this match a lot. Uh, in the end, though, uh, Josh Woods, which I, I feel like was another uh, winner, is it was a, the first judge's decision in the tournament. Right. Okay. So there was a roll-up at the end. Uh, then there was a boss and crab. Woods did not tap out. Uh, they go to a judge's decision, and Woods won via vote. So that's pretty cool. They actually went to a judge's decision. So that's, that's really cool. Um. They shook. They tried to shake hands after the match. Kenny King kind of lost it, and uh, so I don't know. Yeah. So it was pretty good. They they did it differently. You know, they had the uh, 
the different ending going to a judge's decision. So overall, two pretty good matches. It was probably of the f- three weeks we've seen, it was probably the weakest match uh, show so far. As yeah. far like match I'd quality, think. but it was still pretty good. It was still nothing to, you know, I enjoyed it. All right. We will move to the uh, giant show that is Monday Night Raw. Yeah, we ain't going to go into as big a detail on this fucking show. Uh, this show, <laughs> as always, was uh, no retribution because they are all quarantined. Um, so there was no any sign of retribution during this show, which was kind of a breath of fresh air. Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, no raw underground because apparently because of the quarantine situation and stuff they were they they feel like it was unnecessary to have that many people around the ring so no raw underground this week either uh yeah this was the uh show after clash of champions um it was basically sitting around just all talking about uh how they won and the legends were doing hanging out christian michaels big show and rick Flair just hanging out all night uh, there was some rematches on the show, which I don't know why they do after every pay-per-view, but they do. Uh, Oscar once again yeah. defeated Zelina Vega for the championship. Um, I don't know why they <laughs> did that. But, I don't either. Remember, remember, uh, went a long time ago when they said no more rematches? Yeah, I no more so rematches. I guess that is over because that's all we've been having. Uh, Keith Lee and Andrade had a really good match. I mean, it was not quick, or yeah. not not long. Uh, Keith Lee kind of destroyed him pretty quickly. Um, yeah. So Keith Lee gets the win. Uh, that was, I mean, I I don't know what they're gonna do with Andrade. Maybe that means he's gonna get moved in the draft this week. Um, yeah, because but uh, good news is um, good news is Garza said that it's not a tear or nothing, and that he shouldn't be out more than four or five weeks. Hopefully, less. So. Yeah, so that's, uh, that was good news. Uh, yeah, it is the draft next week. Well, this week as we're talking. Uh, Starting so. on SmackDown, though. SmackDown. Why, why, why wouldn't they start it on Raw? Because I think they want to not have that much time in between. Uh, because if you do it on Raw, then you have to uh, wait okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And this way you're only doing it Friday and you got the weekend, then you do it again. I think that's what they're – you know what, though? Okay. Honestly, they have the WWE Network. They should really just make the draft and uh, the draft and network special. A network special, yes. What the hell, man? Have it on the network on like Saturday Utilize night. that shit. Have it on the network on like Saturday night. You don't even have to have any matches. Just have a draft. No, you don't have to have matches. Make it a special. And then you can That's just the whole point. on Raw and SmackDown the next week. Like, uh, make the network a little more special. Uh, like, maybe, especially since NXT is not on there no more. One of the things that really pissed me off was Mandy Rose debuted with Dana Brooke. So now they took two women from the ever-depleted SmackDown women's roster. And now they've got two more. Yeah. Uh, still no announcement as to what SmackDown's getting from the trade. So, eh. Guess nothing. Yeah. Uh, not a lot happened. They had some good matches, Murphy. And they, they the, the, most of the show was the Mysterio family's, uh, you know, lifetime drama that they've got going on. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, Murphy or – I got to talk about something. So, okay. So, the internet exploded with this Murphy and Aaliyah shit because they're like, oh, he's 30-something and she's 19. Yeah, she's 19. She's legal. I don't understand why people are so – Because of – that's because it's of all the all the stuff that's been happening with wrestling business, you know. Because I I know, but because like uh, especially with um oh what's his name Marty Squirrel. Yeah. Because the stuff that he did, they said was consent, and the girl even said it was consent, but she was of legal age in in England, but. He's still it's it's kinda weird, right? I mean he's thirty something and the girl that he was with was seventeen, so it's still I mean in nineteen thirty it's still man. I, I understand it. But it's a, it's not real. And people like I know like I crazy know. and I'm like, 
because Alexa Bliss tweeted, you know, hey, shoot your shot as like a tweet to Murphy, you know. And yeah. everyone was like, oh, da, da, da. she's like, it's a storyline. She's yeah. like, I don't, don't get it. it, it why? Is, I don't understand. It's wrestling. You don't do this if someone, if this happens on a TV show. Like, it's wrestling. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. it's not real. He's not really dating a 19 year old. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had uh, one big surprise, and Dolph Ziggler set told, uh, Adam Pierce that he had the guy to challenge for the Drew McIntyre's title, and uh, it turned out to be his old tag team partner Bobby Roode, Bobby. who had longer hair. Yeah, he looked weird. Uh, uh, he looked weird. Uh, he did not win it, uh, but uh, he got beat pretty quick. Yeah, and then Randy Orton uh, put on some night vision goggles and beat up the legends as the show went off the air. Um, <laughs> the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> All we also. Night vision. Night vision goggles. That was so ridiculous. Uh, all we also came back on this show. That's pretty much raw. Uh, it, you know, it's raw. They was better, uh, but it was still wasn't. You know, well, it's, raw is the yeah. is raw yeah. is the like soap opera show of WWE. So you know, yeah. So that that's what. Raw uh, was. on Tuesday we had um, uh, AEW Dark. There was nothing of note on AEW Dark. Uh, all squash matches. Um, and then on uh, on Impact, uh, we had, uh, it, we opened up with, uh, I think it was Eric Young and Eddie Edwards. But uh, Eddie Edwards got attacked by, or Eddie Edwards was calling out Eric Young, but then Sally K- uh, Sammy Callahan came out after his RVD storyline's over And apparently he went from good guy back to bad guy again because then Ken Shamrock came out and beat up Eddie Edwards, I guess, setting up a match between him and Eddie Edwards at Bound for Glory, I guess. I don't know. what. Apparently Ken Shamrock and and Sammy Callahan are kind of friends still, even though they haven't been on the idol. But now they're here. That's that's impact. Yeah, that's impact. Um, We had – EC3 saying that he's next week he's going to have a funeral for the TNA championship and he's going to burn it. So uh, I almost called him Titus O'Neil. Wow. So uh, Moose Moose got really pissed off about that. And uh, and then uh, we had uh, Heath Slater and Rhino get beat up by uh, uh, Reno Scum and they helped. Hernandez get his money back that they that Heath Slater and Rhino took to pay for the ads that Heath Slater's been doing, <laughs> and so they have a match at, at, at Victory Road now. Um, and then we had uh, we had a uh, women's match between um, I think it was who's the chick uh, Kimberly. Kimberly and Sue Young. Sue Young got the win, started freaking out again, or Susie started freaking out again. And so at Victory Road, it'll be Susie versus Deanna Perrazzo, not for the title, because Kylie Ray's got her title shot at Bound for Glory. Um, what else was happened on this show? Uh, I think that was pretty much of all the like major stuff. Oh. Uh, they're apparently Tommy Dreamer and um, Brian Myers. Is that his name? Is that his name in Brian? Is it Brian Myers? Sure. I think I it think. is. Kurt Hawkins, basically. Yeah, Brian. He, uh, apparently him and him and Tommy Dreamer are gonna wrestle at Victory Road. And uh, so you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Victory Road because. I don't feel like doing it on the Saturday part, so we're just going to go ahead and go into it. Fine, yeah. Um, uh, Reno Scum got beat by Heath Slater and Rhino, so they got their money back again, so they can run ads again. Uh, Moose had a match with Trey from the Rascals. Hey, cool. You got the victory road up there. Awesome. (laughs) Uh, Had a a match with uh, Trey from the Rascals. EC3 did some cool light stuff and – trickery stuff and Moose was freaking out because he wants his title back and he got beat by Trey 
in a major upset. And um, EC3 said, uh -oh. um, let's see, we also had uh, Diana Prazo beat Susie. And then she put her arm in a steel chair and jumped off the top rope and landed on it. So that was crazy. We had EC, or, uh, Eric Young beat Eddie Edwards with some with some rule breaking. And but after the match, Bridge Swan came out, beat him up, and got the last laugh. So that's still setting up their match for Bound for Glory for the title. Uh, we had an uh, X Division match between Rahit Raju versus Willie Mack in the Beat Rahit Challenge. <laughs> it's an open challenge. Uh, Willie Mack beat him. I did not expect that uh, because Willie, ever, he just had that title. He just started this beat for heat challenge and then he lost. I went, I was, I was that, 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 that shocked me. Uh, we also had a four, fatal four way between four tag team guys because they're all feuding Ace Austin, Ace Austin versus uh, Alexander versus uh Carl Anderson versus, I think it was Chris Saban. And uh, Alexander got the win from the North. So, so even that though. Like a, like probably a four team X Division, like Ultimate X Masters. Well, at, no, no, no. It's supposed to be a four team, four team. I mean, right now they have uh, Motor City Machine Guns taking on. Uh, the Good Brothers for the titles, and the other two teams aren't in the match. But I feel like they keep having these teams feud. They should have a fatal four way or something, but they still have it as a, just a two on two. So okay. we'll see. Um, trying to think. I think there was one more match. Uh, oh, no. Did I say Brian Myers beat Tommy Dreamer? You mentioned it. I don't think I said that yet. I don't think you mentioned it for. Yeah, they, they, they had their match. Brian Myers beat him. I Thank got God. Him. Jesus. That was Victory Road. So not a not a really a pay per view, more of just a special. It was their it was their <laughs> first uh, uh, Impact Plus special. That they they haven't ran any of those since the pandemic started. So, so okay, cool, cool. So the first one. We'll go into the Wednesday night quote war. Uh, I don't consider it a war, but whatever. So. On NXT, you mentioned an Invitational. Well, there was also a really cool Invitational on uh, NXT. Uh, there was the Cameron Grimes Invitational Stepping Stones to the Moon. Uh, <laughs> Cameron Grimes uh, beat somebody uh, with the cave in, and then Ridge Holland uh, took out the next opponent that was supposed to come out, and then they fought, and uh, it was a stoppage and not really a match. Uh, Cameron Grimes is like yeah. the best thing every week on NXT. I love it so much. Cameron is Cameron Grimes is, is great. Um, Adam Cole and Austin Theory had a pretty good match. Uh, Adam Cole looks to be heading face here, uh, which was is weird to see. Uh, but uh, apparently, Adam Cole is uh, leaning uh, towards the good side. Uh, yeah. Shotzi Blackheart and Dakota Kai had a match. Uh, Shotzi won. Pretty good. Pretty good match. Um, they had three women's segments on this show. Uh, Caden Carter defeated Xia Lee again, and then after the match, she was kind of heated and upset. Uh, so we'll see if that leads to anywhere. Eventually, she's got to blow up. Yeah, eventually she's going to. The main event of the show, the main event match, was Candice and Gargano versus uh, Priest and uh, Io. Uh, this was a pretty good uh, mixed tag, but with Candice in it, it's always going to be good. Uh, Candace and Johnny get the win, so they get the momentum heading into TakeOver, which was pretty, right. pretty, pretty good match. And then they had the, the face-off between Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly, which sold the match pretty good for me, honestly. I was, I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly is really good at talking. I was down for that. Um, so it, it wasn't much, you know, they, they, you know, pretty good show. It was just the, uh, you know, go home to – Back, uh, takeover. So they, you know, just continued the matches. Um, no tag yep. team storyline really going on right now. I don't know, you know. Yeah, what's going on with that? Focus on the tag teams yet. So. Um, yeah, no, there was no tag team title match at takeover. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. It's weird. I, I, 
I don't know if you can, I mean technically I guess the number one contenders are the Undisputed Era. Well, no, they're heading yeah. towards that match. That's going to be Undisputed Era. Oh, I got some. I got some choo choo speculation station. <laughs> we have uh, we got we got some speculation here that Bobby Roode's been talking to James Storm, Ooh. and his hair's growing out again. So maybe they might just do maybe maybe Bobby Roode's you know thinking hey I'm almost done. James Storm's probably like I'm almost done. Yeah. Maybe we should do what got us we were at our highest level of popularity was beer money. Maybe they'll come back to NXT, do beer money. There are not very good teams in NXT. I mean. Well, so to kind of elaborate on that, uh, James Storm did an interview, and uh, he basically said he was supposed to debut on Raw after Mania, and then the uh, pandemic happened, and it did not happen. Huh. So. I'm just saying, man, if they do that. Maybe. If they do it, that'd be cool. They could win the NXT tag titles, Raw, SmackDown, do like a two-year run, and then go out on, you know, as beer money. That'd be great. I'd be down. I'd be into it. I don't like WWE with them to do the beer part. I mean, Bobby Roode, Bobby Roode hasn't been doing anything anyway, so. Uh, and he's just going to keep getting jobbed out in singles action. Yeah, so you might as well do it, man. I'd say pull the trigger on that. Oh, so, that's, hey, if that comes true, you know, hey, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, that's we, right. <laughs> We got the scoops. Uh, <laughs> I am the conductor of the speculation station. All right, we're going to keep this a weekly segment. It's happening every time. I like I like the speculation station. I, <laughs> I am all <laughs> aboard the speculation station. All right. So we'll jump over to the other show, uh, Dynamite. Uh, AEW Dynamite yep. this week was headlined by John. I feel like- yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I feel like this was a better show this week just because AEW or NXT was kind of a it was a go home show, but they did they didn't do much. You know what I mean? They didn't yeah, the have matches, a whole lot of action. The matches weren't much and they kinda just you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, uh this headline Cody Mox, Rhodes. Uh Moxley oh, sorry. Defending, Moxley defending the title against uh, an opponent of Eddie Kingston's choice on this show. Oh, right, right, headline. right. And Cody Rhodes came out first and said that he was not going to accept the challenge of Brody Lee for a dog collar match. And then I don't know why he wants to have a dog collar match anyway. That's kind of random. He, um, Cody didn't want to accept the challenge, but Brody Lee, they, they came out and they, they kind of had a big brawl with all this, all, like a bunch of people. And that made Cody accept the challenge. So he, he. And then uh, Eddie Edwards, uh, yeah, or Eddie Kingston, sorry, yeah, said that he's going to have a mystery opponent for John Moxley. I was really hoping it was going to be Pac, but it wasn't. No. Um, uh, they had a good they, tag team match. Uh, they're, having a, uh, they're having a – oh, sorry. A good tag team, <laughs> a good tag team match, uh, the 20-minute challenge match, FTR versus SCU. Um, yep. They love their initials in AEW. Uh, FDR and SCU, it was uh, Kaz and Sky. Uh, Daniels does not wrestle much anymore. Um, this was pretty good, honestly. Uh, this was this was a damn good tag team match. Uh, in the end, yep. FDR gets the win. Uh, with Toby Blanchard helps them get the win. Um, they announced an eight-man single elimination tournament. Uh, don't know exactly yeah. what it's for yet or anything about it. but I uh, think they said it was for the TV title. It, okay. Uh, so the first three participants were announced as Phoenix, Jungle Boy, and Kenny Omega. Yeah. And, and then when they announced that, um, uh, Hangman Page was on commentary, and they announced that, and he got pissed off and left. So I guess he still wants to be a tag team partner with Kenny Omega, but – Kenny doesn't, so we'll see where that leads. Yeah, uh, Jericho wrestled. We can skip that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, they had a pretty good match with um, Darby Allen and Ricky Starks. Darby Allen did a bunch of his crazy stuff. Mick Foley is going to have to talk to Darby Allen and say, "Look, dude, you're not going to be able to walk in ten year, or five years, so you know, yeah. you might want to yeah. calm down a little." Uh, but it was a good match. 
Uh, Darby Allen got the win. Uh, the only women's segment was Britt Baker versus Red Velvet. Uh, and Baker yep. won quickly. Uh, this was. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the main event, Eddie Kingston versus, uh, is, uh, he picked The Butcher, of all people, uh, against Sean Moxley. Um, yeah. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a bad match, but, no. but Butcher, Butcher got blown up. I think yeah. he was. He did not look like he could go as long as John Moxley wanted to go. <laughs> and Moxley won with his new uh, submission uh, bulldog choke move. And that yeah, yeah, stole I stole it from Brian. Brian Kendrick. Uh, I agree. Uh, Dynamite was probably the better show. The tag team match, uh, Ricky Starks and Allen. Oh, good, so. And MJF had a segment where he was contemplating joining the inner circle. He brought them all t-shirts, except for Sammy Guevara, so I think he might be trying to take Sammy, Sammy Guevara's spot. <laughs> we'll see. So, we'll, there's that. Yeah, we'll see where that goes. Uh, uh. <laughs> yep. And then on Thursday, we had NXT UK. We had NXT UK. I love NXT UK. We had the start of the uh, Heritage Cup uh, this week. Yes. Uh, Alexander Wolf and Noam Dar with Pete Dunn as a special guest referee. Uh, before that, though, it was yeah. the triple threat qualifying match. The winner will be the last man in, and it was Kenny Williams, Amir Johnson, Amir Jordan, and Ashton Smith. Not really yeah. the type of blockbuster I was expecting. No, I'm not really sure why they made this a mystery. You know, I was thinking, okay, maybe it'll be – the returning somebody. I don't know. I was, yeah. That was, I was, yeah, it was kind of a letdown. Um, and uh, Kenny Williams gets to win. It was a pretty good match. Uh, so he faces Trent Seven in the first round. But, yeah, it, it was weird to make that, like, a mystery and have this huge triple threat match and people were like, oh, my God. And then it was just those three. Was, no knock on those three, but that wasn't really the worth the whole mystery. <laughs> no. Um, no. Uh, Definitely Jenny. not. Jenny. Then after that, we had Jenny. Jenny, Jenny the return of Jenny. And Zaya Brookside uh, had a yeah. pretty decent match. Uh, Jenny wins uh, with a submission. And then yep. it was the main event. Noam Dar and Alexander Wolf with Pete Dunne. This was the first Heritage Cup uh, match under the new uh, – you know, British rules. British rules. British rounds rules. Six three-minute rounds. Uh, I liked it. Uh, two out of three falls. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, Pete Dunn kind of kept it down the middle. Uh, Noam Dar won. Uh, well, kind of kept it down the middle. He kind of kind of kicked Noam Dar in the arm a couple times. I mean, yeah. Um, but Noam Dar still got the win. It was a really was, weird match. He had two yeah, two heels going yeah. against each other. Um, the ending saw Walter or Walter come out because Wolf, you know, is a part of uh, Imperium. Uh, Wolf yep. and Dunn got into it. That went Walter to come out, and then Ilja come. Uh, Dragon Move came out, and so we'll see what that what that leads to. Uh, pretty good show. The only three matches, obviously, with the British rounds rules, you're gonna have not that many matches right now with those matches going. You know, probably pretty yeah. long, long each time. Um, but yeah, I love NXT UK. And I'm so happy it's back. And uh, looking forward to next week because, and they do have a takeover oh, yeah. coming sometime next month, I think. Oh yeah. And so now we'll transition over to Friday. I did not put up the UK thing. My bad, guys. Uh, we'll transition over <laughs> to Friday for the SmackDown. Uh, this show was uh not good. I'm glad you said it. Um, yeah, this show, I don't know what they're – I don't know what the good, what, what, what the point of this show was, honestly. Yeah. Um, there was not – The Roman Reigns, Jimmy – or Jimmy – is it Jimmy or J Jay Uso? It's Jay. Roman Reigns, Jay Uso stuff in this, in this show was really weird. Uh, it was weird. Uh, I didn't like John Morrison and AJ Styles both – not being jobbed out, but losing. Yeah, um, yeah, losing clean. The first segment was 
I mean, it's all right, but Roman and Jay and AJ went long. It was a consensus. Yeah. Uh, and then Jay Uso and AJ Styles wrestled. Uh, Jay gets the win, like I said. It was a good Jay match. Jay Uso beat, beat AJ Styles clean. What I, the hell world are we living in? Uh, AJ's going to Raw. This is the world we're living in. But I, I still don't take Jay serious as a competitor, as a, like, contender. So him beating AJ was really not. Yeah. And then Otis destroyed John Morrison. Uh, no sign of Miz. Yeah. I don't know where Miz was. Uh, Miz was not around. Um, uh, Morrison lost in about, I don't know, what was it, like three minutes? <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe Morrison and AJ are both going to Raw. That's the only thing I can think of. And then Matt Riddle and then Matt Riddle gets, gets, gets freaking demoted to a six-man tag with the Lucha House Party. Um, the only uh, good thing from this show was Alexa Bliss. Uh, that was – the to the KO show, which I so I mean, yeah, let's bring a raw superstar over, whatever. Uh, Kevin Owens show with Alexa. This was the only thing at I at least they watch. explained it. They brought yeah. the raw superstar over, but at least they explained that the draft was coming, so they're gonna have him. Isn't he wrestling? He's wrestling, somebody? he's wrestling Bray Wyatt next week. Yeah, um, I, I they it was part of that superstar initiative, whatever they're calling it, where they can. Once a month or whatever. I anyway, yeah, that was the only part I liked of this show. Uh, Alexa kind of went full on heel and joined uh, Bray Wyatt, the Fiend. So they had their like Joker and Harvey Quinn moment at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the only part I liked about this show. Uh, the main event: uh, Sammy and Jeff Hardy. Uh, pretty good match. I don't know how they're both wrestling after what they went through on Clash of Champions. Uh, but this yeah. was the only match that was actually anything on this show. Uh, every other match was, you know, whatever. Uh, this match was pretty good uh, in Sami Zayn. This was for the championship, uh, and Sami Zayn got the win. So Sami Zayn is still, and he's now 100% the undisputed real intercontinental champion. Right. We'll go to the other Friday show real quick, and we'll talk about New Japan strong. Don't forget about 205 Live. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Well, yeah. Let me do that first then. Actually, you can because this week's 205 Live was not a show. It was just a repackaged show. It was just, They just were highlighting all the all the stuff that's happened in the past few weeks leading up to the Cruiserweight title match at TakeOver. So, nothing to talk about on 205 Live. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was just a... Recap for the, the highlight show. Highlight show, yeah. Uh, so the New Japan Strong results, they are doing, once again, they are doing the Lions Break Crown Tournament. Uh, that's current. They, I think that's all Strong's going to be, just tournaments, it seems like. But <laughs> seems like it. Uh, the first match was Clark Connors and Logan Regal. This is, they're into the semifinals of this tournament. This is more, if you don't know, this is kind of their Los Angeles dojo. Uh, crew the wrestlers that are training in the dojo so that's what these all these guys are um first yeah. match Clark Connors won and then in the other semifinal is Danny Limelight versus Blake Christian this is the second semifinal and so Danny Lime, Limelight wins so the uh finals of that tournament will be Danny Limelight versus Clark Connors and the main right. event of this show was a was TJ Perkins and Carl Fredericks for Slip Gordon and Brody King. Well, that's not the main event. Sorry, I forgot there was another match. Uh, Gordon and Brody King uh, get the win. The two ROH guys got the win. Pretty weird. That's weird. <laughs> and then the fourth match was the Bullet Club. Jay White, Kenta, Chase Owens, and Kiko Leo versus David Finley, Jeff Cobb, Rocky Romero. Kiko Leo. Kiko Leo. Okay. I – and it, they fought David Finley, Jeff Cobb, Rocky Romero, and Mysterioso. Um, I didn't know Kenta was a part of Bullet Club until this match. So um, you so didn't know that? I, I, yeah, I didn't realize until now. And when are they doing oh, that wow. American title match or the United States title match? Because uh, you know, uh, whenever, whenever they can get John Moxley to Japan. 
Just do it on this show. Jesus Christ. Just, just get the title off Moxley so we can be done with it. God. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's kind of weird. Well, see what the problem is, they gave him the AEW title. So now. Yeah. Now, if you have him get beat, it's like. Mm? That's stupid. So anyway, the Bullet Club AEW won. AEW might not like it. So. Uh, the Bullet Club won. Chase Owens actually uh, got the pinfall in this match, which I was figuring it would be uh, uh, Kenta, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, we will now move on to another. Well, wait, wait, wait. Before you go to TakeOver, I know you're going to say TakeOver, but <laughs> go ahead and since we're talking about New Japan, go ahead oh, okay. and go, for the, go over the New Japan G1 standings. So, we have the Climax uh, 30. So, we'll go A block and then B block. In the A block, after they've all wrestled five matches now. So, in first place, it is Kota Ibushi with eight points. Jay White with six points. Tai Chi has six points. Will Ospreay has six points. Minoru Suzuki has six points. Okada has six points. Cobb, Takagi, and Ishii all have four points. And Takahashi has zero points. Oh, and five. Poor Takahashi. And then in the B block. And Jeff Cobb, Jeff Cobb signs with New Japan instead of ROH or AEW. Yeah. And he is getting beat left and right. What the hell? Yep. yep. And then in the B block, it is Naito in first place with only six points. They've only played four, I guess. He is the, cha- he is the champion. Uh, they, they haven't had their I-5 yeah. yet. Uh, Yano with six points, which is what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Yano's in second. Uh, Juice Robinson, also with six points. Kenta has Kenta, Zack Saber Jr. and Evil all have four points. Goto Tanahashi and Yoshihashi have two points, and Sonata has two points. Right. So they're gonna do obviously ten, uh, nine matches because you face everybody, and then it goes to the top two, right? It's the top person from each block facing each other top, in the finals. Just the top person. Right now, I'm going to say, I'm making my picks. I'm going to say it's going to be Will Ospreay versus hmm, Yano. <laughs> oh, whatever. I'm going to say it's going to be – I'll say it's going to be Naito versus Jay White. Yeah, it's probably a better pick. Uh, I mean, I'd be a for Obushi too, but – Poor Evil too. Yeah, Evil. Was evil, a evil had one of the, he had one of the shortest reigns ever with that with those belts. Yeah, and now he's just yeah. Now he's an afterthought. Didn't make sense at all, but okay. So we will head to NXT Takeover Thirty One from the new Capital Wrestling Center. Yeah. Uh, basically, the point of that was uh, full sale is having in-person classes again. And fearing another breakout, uh, NXT decided to move their production to the Performance Center. Or so, And they redid it. So now you have the Thunderdome and you have the Capitol Wrestling Center. Uh, it's pretty cool. They have like yeah. a cage around it, uh, bikes. And- yeah, and they, they had a nice little video package of what WWF used to be way, 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 yeah. way back. Yeah, the Capitol Wrestling Federation or Championship or whatever the hell it was called. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little way, a uh, really, really, really be- throwback. Yeah, was- like that's 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 a that wasn't even Vince McMahon Senior. That was Jess McMahon. That was like Vince McMahon's grandpa. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's kind of really, really strange. Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. That was kind of, I don't know how many people actually knew what the hell that was whenever they did that. So this was a mix but, of in-person crowd and a uh, virtual crowd, which is pretty cool. Yep. So this was pretty cool. Yeah, they had the video, they had the LED screen, but it was just like the NBA and and NHL is just one big wall. Yeah, they didn't have like the multiple walls, and then they had people obviously. And they it was friends and family of uh, people in the uh, you know friends and family of the former center people, the trainees, and then. Uh, Pretty good environment. Uh, the crowd really didn't make much noise. I don't know if that was due to just the audio or if it was due to them just not making noise. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so we had some cool highlights. We had some cool returns and stuff. So we'll get right into it. The first match of the night was the North American Championship. Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano. I'm going to be honest. My feed, my internet kind of went down during this match. I didn't see the whole thing. Uh, but what I saw, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a good match. Uh, Damian Priest uh, showed that he can go. Yes. Um, yeah, it was a really good match. Uh, I thought Johnny Gargano was going to win it, honestly, a couple times. Oh, I, I, yeah, that ending was, I thought for sure it was going to, it was going to be Gargano. Uh, but in the end, he countered the one final beat DDT. Um, then he hit the reckoning off the second rope, which was awesome. Uh, and that was a hell of a way to kick off the show. Uh, that it was yeah, uh, really good. Uh, so Priest gets he dropped the win. him, dropped him right on his head. Yeah, that was nasty. Uh, Priest gets the win. So you did pick Priest in that one for your big. That was your lock, your five point uh, pick, and it worked out for you. So you got five points. I picked Gargano, and I got nothing. I only had that for one point though. So, so right now, currently five nothing. At you. Uh, the second match was Kushida and Velveteen Dream. Uh, Dream came out dressed as Doc Brown to mock Kashida's uh, time splitter uh, gimmick, and he kept calling him uh, 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 whatever. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie, he came out. I didn't see Doc Brown. I saw Don King. <laughs> That's I thought I thought that too, but then I realized what he was doing with the Back to the Future. <laughs> Um, but he kept calling him – as soon as he started calling him McFly and Marty, then I realized what he was doing. Uh, throughout the match, yeah. he kept calling Kushida Marty or calling him McFly. And then I was like, oh, was, that's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. This was an okay match, but it was probably the weakest match on the show. Yes, it was. Uh, this was a lot of Kushida just working over the shoulder of uh, Velveteen. Um, and then – uh, just I, I like Kushida, but this new aggressive Kushida's I don't know, it's different. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kushida ended up getting the win with the hoverboard lock in a weird like he did it, and then he just wouldn't let go. Um, it was a good match, but yeah, like you said, it was probably the uh, weakest of the five matches. Yeah. Um, so we both picked Kushida for that one. Uh, I had it for four. You had it for three. So that you're currently up eight to four. Next match was for the first time ever, the Cruiserweight Championship being defended on a takeover. This was Santos Escobar defending against Isaiah Swerve Scott. Uh, Swerve Scott has beaten Escobar twice, and this was his supposedly, uh, apparently, final moment, final chance against Escobar. Is what, you know, this was his chance to finally yeah. be one-on-one, no shenanigans. So we thought uh, throughout this match, um, Legado Del Fantasma came out. And out of nowhere, Ashanti Adonis uh, showed up. I'm not sure where he came from or why he was out there. Uh, but it's – Yeah. Um, this match was – it was good. It was not as good as some of their matches they've had previously, in, including their, like, uh, Lucha Underground matches. Uh, I thought it was over at one point when uh, Swerve hit the house call and then hit a 450 right afterwards. But Escobar ended up yeah. coming out. Uh, I thought for sure it was over. Um, the ending was kind of – he pushed in. They were both on the apron, and Swerve got pushed backwards, and he hit his head on the post. But I don't really know if he actually did. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't know. But then he – Escobar won with a shoulder breaker? Yeah. Was a throwback? <laughs> um, he did a double underhook, and then he just did, dropped him down for a shoulder breaker. Um, so interesting finish. Uh, Escobar got the win. I was surprised by that. I did pick Escobar, um, but I was not expecting him yeah. to win, honestly. Um, so I got two points right. there. So it is now currently eight to six. Um, the next match, the women's championship. This match was fantastic. I love this match. Uh, Candice LeRae and Io Shirai. Uh, this match, both these women are just fantastic. They're, they're great. Uh, the referee got knocked out at one point, and then uh, Johnny Carcano ran down with the referee shirt, uh, tried to fast count, sure, I kicked out. Um, Gargano took the belt, brought it into the ring, 
the referee was there arguing with Gargano. Uh, Ray hit her with the belt, and I thought that was going to be it, but it but yeah, ended up kicking out anyway. Uh, Shirai did a hit a Spanish fly from the top rope to get the win. Uh, that was awesome. Good ending, kept yeah. Shirai strong. I thought it was going to be Larray. We both thought it was going to be Larray, uh, and she did not get the win, uh, which yeah, kind of shocking. And then after the match, yes. uh, Tony Storm shows up on the screen, says yep. that she's going to turn NXT upside down, inside out, or whatever she said. And you know what? Um, it can be Tony time. All I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it can be Tony time yeah. all the time. I am. Hundred percent, and then the right after that, uh, the yeah. the green um, motor motorcycle wearing person showed up, and it was Ember Moon. Uh, Nathan nailed that one around the head. Um, so Ember Moon has a new look. She kind of had like a yeah shaved so head I'm, with a mohawk. Only thing, only thing I don't understand about that is why you'd have two people at the same time. It kind of took away. You know. Well, you have those two, and then on the pre-show, uh, Rhea Ripley said she wants the winner of Shirai and Larray. So now you have Tony, Ember, and uh, Rhea all gunning for the title. Uh, I think NXT is, women, NXT is the best women's roster in wrestling. Uh, they And they just got way better with Tony and Ember showing up. So they are right. deep in NXT, man. I think Raw needs a couple people or something because <laughs> – yeah, Raw's pretty good too, but and then, got two of them out right now. Yeah, that's that's part of the problem. And so the main event, Finn Bauer and Kyle O'Reilly. This was hard hitting. This was technical. Uh, both men ended up bleeding from the mouth. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Bauer had a broken jaw. I don't know, but it was. Uh, this yeah. match was as close to like a real like MMA fight in a wrestling match as you could get. Uh, they mixed in MMA with wrestling really well in this match. Uh, this was – and, you know, I'm going to be honest. There were moments where I thought O'Reilly was going to win. Uh, there was a couple moments during this match where I actually thought O'Reilly was going to get the win. Um, it ended up yeah. – Bauer hit the coup de gras and, like, hit the coup de gras. He, <laughs> he landed on top of Kyle. Well, <laughs> well I, yeah, well, before that – I think they called it early. I think the match ended quicker than what they even See, wanted, even though it was already a long match. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, Finn Balor called for the end of the match because his jaw, I think it is broken. I think it's and, broken. Uh, Riley was bleeding as well. Uh, this was. Yeah, uh, <laughs> O'Reilly hit uh, German suplex, and right after he hit it, Finn Balor jumped right back up and hit him with a foot stomp and then went up and hit the coup de gras. And that was it. Yeah. Ended quickly, which was kind of out of nowhere. Um, and a lot of people were saying that it felt rushed at the end. But yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> I think Finn was legitimately injured. Uh, after the, I thought the show yeah. was over, and then Adam Cole just got thrown over the barricade. And Rich Holland yeah. had Cole on his shoulder. Uh, Strong and Fish ran out, uh, acting like they didn't know what was happening. So looks like a little tease of the Undisputed Era maybe – Splitting up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, a- choo choo. Uh-uh. We got some more speculation <laughs> station. <laughs> there are rumors that Cole's gonna be on a baby face run, which pretty much looks like it. Yeah, O'Reilly's true. gonna be on a baby face run. Pretty much looks like it. But Bobby and Fish Bobby Bobby and Fish. Bobby Bobby and- Fish and uh and uh uh, Roderick Strong are not slated to join them in this baby face run. So, will they join Rich Holland and make a new Undisputed Era and put him over? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, real quick, we both picked Bauer. I had him for five. You had him for four. So, that is 10 to 11, you. But, we had bonus points on the line. Uh, we... Had bonus points of how many members of the Undisputed Era would interfere in the match. And since technically none of them actually came out during the match, I, I yep. got the bonus point because I said zero. You said two. So in a shocking turn of events, I still can't get a win. We tied. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, <coughs> the punishment, if you don't, if you didn't watch our prediction show, which you should have, shame on you for not. Uh, the prediction, uh, the, the punishment was we have to do, the loser had to do an impression of every single NXT champion. And since we tied, um, I'm guessing we're just going to have to go back and forth <laughs> and start with them. Yep. For whoever was first and then go all the way down to the current champion. There's 21 right. people on this list, but there are three double champions, so it's really not that many. No, it's only 18. Yeah, 18. So do you want to start? You get, you get nine, I get nine. Yep, yeah, that actually worked out pretty well. Uh, do you want to start it, or do you want me to start? I'll let you start with good old Seth Rollins. How do I? How do I do a Seth? I can't. I can't do impressions at all. Uh, okay. I'm, okay. Do you remember when Seth Rollins was a heel in WWE, right? With the with the. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. So. <laughs> 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 it's me. Oh, this is like. Freaking... Wow. Uh, I'm Seth Rollins. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of burn it down. <laughs> it's all he says. He doesn't really have any freaking quotes. You get a good one. All right. You get a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Next one is in it Big E. Big E. Yes. Yeah. Then I we also get to see if I can remember all the champions in a row. Yeah. I had uh, one in front of me. <laughs> Yeah, so Big E, I, I mean, I kind of already did this once before, but, yep. you know, I'll go ahead and do it again here. Oh, YouTube and podcast land. <laughs> Don't you dare be sour. Clap for your triple S podcast and feel the power. Okay. Um. See, how the freak am I supposed to do Bo Dallas? Okay. Yep, Bo <clears throat> Dallas. If you just believe, then you're going <laughs> to hit the like button on this podcast. Believe it. <laughs> All right. And then, do you remember? It was after that. It was, uh, it was, it was Adrian Neville. Yeah, never Adrian Neville. All right. All right. All right. Adrian Neville. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. All really. right. Good job with the good look at the accent. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> I am I am not a garden gnome. <laughs> <laughs> I am not an elf. I will hit you with a red arrow and stay the champion. There you go. I don't I'll, know what the um, fuck that was. All right, uh, I get to do Sami Zayn. That was bad. I feel bad now. I get to do Sami Zayn. Uh, Sami Zayn has no quotes. He does not say anything. He has no like. He can do what he does now. Ah, I can't do his voice, dude. Uh, <clears throat> I'm the real. <laughs> I'm the real Intercontinental Champion. I'm the Great Liberator. It's Sami Zayn. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, you should. You should know who beat Sami Zayn. After uh, Sami Zayn, it was it Kevin Owens. Of course, yes. All right. Uh, so, Kevin Owens, let's see here. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, got to get that Canadian accent. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, but Kevin Owens, fuck. Let's see. Kevin Owens, <laughs> fight, Owens, fight. <laughs> I don't fucking know. There you go. I don't fucking know. I can't uh, do Kevin Owens. Okay, so I get to do Finn Bauer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you, I, you get to do an accent. How the hell do I? I can't even do accents. Uh, I'm, I'm Finn Bauer. The rest, I don't watch the wrestling world. <laughs> the wrestling world watches yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then Finn Bauer oh, dropped it to – this is bad. This is terrible. Uh, Finn Bauer dropped uh, – He dropped it to Shinsuke? You know, it's Finn, nope. uh, Samoa Joe. Samoa, yep. God, Samoa oh, Joe. God. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, good luck, dude. I'm trying to – ooh. 
Let's see. I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to choke you out. And you're going to tap Joe out. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> uh, so Samoa Joe dropped it to Shinsuke. So fast. So fast. Uh, yeah. Good luck with Shinsuke. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I don't want to sound racist. <laughs> Um, uh, um, Sin Sinsuke Nakamura, <laughs> <laughs> and then he, and dropped, he dropped it to Bobby Roode. Oh, he dropped it to Joe. Joe dropped it to Shinsuke, and then Shinsuke dropped it to Roode. Yes. Yeah. So Bobby, you get good ones, man. I don't know. I can't do Bobby Roode either. No, he got to do a Canadian again. <laughs> no, nah, not really. He don't really use his Canadian accent much. No, he's not much of a. Uh, and when I win the championship, it will be Gloria. And then Rude dropped it to another person I have to do an accent for, Drew McIntyre. <laughs> uh, We've had English, Irish, and Scottish. And Japanese. Uh, Drew McIntyre, uh, I'm going to hit you with the Claymore, and it'll be one, hey. two, three. <laughs> hey, that was better than the other one. Uh, and then Drew dropped it to Andrade. Oh, man. Andrade. Andrade. Eric. Yeah. Tranquilo. There you go. <laughs> uh, Andrade dropped it to Alistair. Uh, he, uh, oh, now we get a Dutch accent. Uh, great. Yeah, I can't do this. Uh, if you knock on my door, I will knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you get to do Tommaso. Tommaso Ciampa? Oh, man. Goldie is coming home <laughs> with me. Um, you get Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano. What the hell? Uh, it's Johnny Wrestling. The Gargano way is the way to go. <laughs> I don't know. None of these people have quotes, dude. Uh, oh, man, you get a good one. <laughs> Adam Cole? Yeah. Easy. <laughs> I'm, I'm Adam Cole, baby! And that's undisputed. And so then, uh, Keith Lee. Uh, <clears throat> I am the women's... It, ugh, I and the limitless one bask in my glory. <laughs> and then uh, the last one, because we already did Finn, uh, Karrion Cross. Oh, God damn. <laughs> the shortest reign in NXT history. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put you in the straight jacket and you. We'll go to sleep. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. That is our point. I'm glad we split that because if I had to do all of those, that would have been a complete disaster. This one wasn't as bad. It was already a disaster. It was a disaster. It would have been way worse. It was just me. So thank you for joining us on this episode of Suplexes. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. As always, you can catch me on the uh, Twitter and the in the Graham and the Book of Face and the YouTube at Sabri ENT. Uh, you can catch this podcast, obviously, if you're listening to it, you know you can catch it where you're listening to it. But also, basically, wherever podcasts are available, Spotify, Stitcher, all that fun stuff. Um, join us every week for every podcast we do. We got this one. Uh, Thursday, we got the video game podcast. I'm looking forward. That's going to be a good one. And we also got the sports podcast coming up on the weekend. And so, as always... Uh, that's going to do it. We thank you for joining us. And as always, I'm here to remind you that save if you can. Not, it's not right. I'm here to remind you <laughs> score if you can, save if you must, but always suplex when necessary. Choo -choo!